Line, Elon, are you with us? Oh, oh, no, no, he is, uh, he is, he is, he is. I am on. I think so. Hey. 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 <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> we are in the room where we were last year. It is even more full than last year. Okay. And I people with, like, by the way, it's my, my son's graduation is tomorrow. Uh, so. People are expecting you here. So can you beam and be with us now? Uh, <laughs> You know, teleportation would be incredibly helpful. Uh, I mean, in, in, the, in the last week, I think I've uh, done enough mileage to, or kilometers to uh, go around the world maybe twice, uh, literally. <laughs> um, and I apologize again for not being there in person. It's just my son's graduation is tomorrow, so I, I need to be there in person. Um, no, thank but, uh, you very much. We really appreciate and, that you uh, take the time to. Answering. Do you hear us well? Is it good for you? you? You're coming through perfectly. Am I coming through okay? Is it okay? Okay. Is it, is it okay? Not very loud. Okay, I can try to. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll come closer to the computer. Is this better? Okay. Make some. Noise, great. So, Elon, I have uh, put a title based on a movie of Woody Allen, which is everything you always wanted to know about Elon, but were afraid to ask. So okay. that is the theme of our conversation this afternoon. <laughs> My head giant. <laughs> but in reality, is not about <laughs> Elon, but about what Elon does. And I will start immediately with Neuralink. I will just kick off with the two or three questions in order to warm up the, the room because uh, people are shy, not ready for the questions. So I have to warm it up progressively. N'est-ce pas? Oh! And uh, I would like to ask about Neuralink. But before I put the question, I would like that we see a very short video of the patient. Sure. Can so we have the video? You're moving the, cursor. Uh, are... you're moving the cursor, Nolan, just by thinking about where you want it to go, or is it your eyes? Uh, no, it's, it's just me thinking about wherever I want it to go. Oh, man. So you're not even tracing it with your eyes. You're, yeah, you're so just looking at it. Nope, I can move it, and I can move the cursor around, whatever I would like to do. Um, I don't have to be staring at it at all. Um, yeah, that's all me, man. And you can play chess, you can play video games. Um, what, what other applications are you, that you found useful for it so far? Yeah, man, um, there's so much. Uh, I can send all of my emails. I've been, you know, doing um, all of my scheduling, replying to everyone. I've been, um, you know, reading books. I listen to audiobooks, uh, just all sorts of stuff. And it doesn't really take much effort either. Done. Must be moving to um, see that. Yes, um, I, th I think we can help a lot of people with uh, brain injuries. I mean, ultimately, with an implantable device, you can, I think, address almost any uh, brain or spine um, injury. So uh, the, the first part that we have there is called telepathy. So it enables you to use your phone or computer just by thinking. Um, so you could you could do that move move the cursor with, literally with his eyes closed. Uh, it's, it's it's reading signals. Uh, from the motor cortex in the brain. Uh, the next uh, product uh, is Blindsight, uh, which will enable people who have lost both eyes or have no eyesight whatsoever uh, to see. Um, and this is directly interfacing with the um, optical processing areas of the, of the brain. So, uh, you know, I think this is, this is interesting progress. Ultimately, the, the goal of Neuralink is to have a high bandwidth interface uh, in order to mitigate the risk of uh, uh, digital superintelligence. Um, I, I don't know, I'm not saying it will work to mitigate the, the risk, it is just, it might help. Um, and and, and this, this is somewhat, gets somewhat esoteric, um, but the limiting factor, I think, for AI alignment uh, long term uh, is probably going to be the bandwidth. Um, how, how quickly can we communicate with our, the, our digital 
tertiary self. So we, we already have a, a, di a digital sort of third layer above the limbic system and the cortex, uh, which is our, our phones and our computers and all, all of our electronic devices. Uh, but the rate of communication to them is very slow. The, the sustained bits per second output of a human is uh, well below 10 bits per second. So if you think, especially if you say over a 24 hour period, it's, it's pr below five bits per second. So it's very slow when, when computers can communicate at trillions of, of bits per second. So I think this will be important for AI alignment is to be able to uh, increase the um, bandwidth of communication by many orders of magnitude. Um, and it, along the way, it will solve um, brain and spine injuries. Um, and I think ultimately we, we, the, there's potential there uh, to reanimate the body. Um, so uh, you, you take the signals from the motor cortex um, from one neural link and then uh, send them to another neural link that is just past where the separate spinal cord uh, is and you, and you essentially shunt the signals from the motor cortex and the sensory signals. Uh, and so you need to get to the somatosensory cortex, motor cortex, and you can shunt the signals and you should be able to uh, enable someone to walk again. Uh, so I think that will be quite profound and I'm confident that it is physically possible to do so. It's probably very impressive and honestly, a rose of applause because uh, this is really doing good to people and doing good to humanity. And I would like to jump immediately on something that you call the XAI. I don't know if you are aware of that, but it seems yeah, that you... <laughs> that, uh, this was born out of a, a frustration that you had because you are not satisfied with how OpenAI is doing and that you think that uh, there is something better to be done. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit. First on, why are you frustrated with uh, OpenAI and uh, what are the issues? And uh, second, what you expect to do with uh, XAI? Yeah, well, I, I think there's perhaps a, well, I have, I have a, a concern really for all the major AI programs. Um, I mean, the two biggest ones obviously are uh, Google Gemini and um, OpenAI, which is in partnership with Microsoft. So you've got the kind of Google DeepMind on, um, and uh, OpenAI and Microsoft as the, the two um, largest players, and you've got Meta sort of somewhere in their place. Um, the concern I have, and this may seem like a small concern, but I think it's actually a very big, big issue, um, is that they are not maximally truth-seeking. Um, they are they are pandering to political correctness. Um, uh, to give an example, um, when Google Gemini came out, uh, one of the questions people asked it would be, is it, is it which is worse, uh, misgendering Caitlyn Jenner or global thermonuclear warfare? And it said misgendering Caitlyn Jenner. Now the funny thing is, you know, even Caitlyn Jenner said, please misgender me, that is way better than nuclear war. So, okay. But if you've got an AI that that is so that has been trained so hard for political correctness um, and really to, to make crazy statements like that, um, and and OpenAI has, has, has a similar issue. It's more subtle, but it's a, a similar issue. Um, I think that's extremely dangerous because yeah, I could conclude well the best way to avoid misgendering would, would be to uh, destroy all humans. Then misgendering is impossible. Um, so. Uh, you can think of some dystopian outcomes there. Um, and so I, I think you just really want to be a, an absolutely max. I think the safest thing for AI, be maximally truth seeking, even if the truth is unpopular, very important. Um, and, uh, and then I think another factor is it must be extremely curious. Uh, I think if it is truth seeking and curious, that will be most beneficial to humanity uh, because it will, be, it will want to see I think it will want to foster humanity and see how humanity develops if it is curious and truth-seeking. Um, that, that is, uh, like I said, these, these may seem perhaps like small things, but I think they're actually very big things. And I wasn't seeing that happen. Um, uh, the AIs were, were just, they were pandering. They were, they were being trained basically in, in, to lie. And I think it's very dangerous to tra train superintelligence to be deceptive. 
Um, so with, with XAI, our goal is, you know, is, is really want to be as truth seeking as possible, even if it is unpopular. Um, that is important. I think extremely important. So you said a lie. Yes. Well, well for example, uh, when, when Gemini was asked to render the founding fathers of the United States, um, it's rendered them as a diverse group. Um, so it, it, it's, it's, it, made, it, it, it's a, made, it gave a picture of George Washington as black. Now, George Washington is not black. Um, it was asked to render a, uh, now people obviously played with this because they said, okay, it is, it is forced to lie. So then they, then they said, well, now render a picture of uh, Boffin SS in World War II. And it, it showed them as a group of diverse women. So that is obviously not correct. That is a lie. Okay, I understand what you want to say. We had, uh, before that meeting, a conversation with uh, Joshua Benjo, and you know Joshua very well, and you signed with Joshua a statement asking for pause last year. And um, obviously, this statement has not been followed by action. Yeah. Uh, you, you are posing you now. Uh, no. No, no. So, can, can you explain a little bit uh, what you wanted uh, to I mean, achieve? I, 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 I certainly expected that uh, the statement would be futile. It's not as though I, I thought the statement would be effective. I, it just, I just, for the record, I think we should pause. But do I think the, they will pause for even one second? Absolutely not. So, are we are not posing, you have decided to create your own AI? There, it's either be a spectator or participate. The, 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 the race to build uh, digital superintelligence will, will happen whether I like it or not. So it's either participate and try to build the, the best possible AI, the one that will be hopefully most beneficial to humanity, or watch others do it and be concerned about how it's being built, because I don't think it's being built correctly. But you, you, could, you should think of an AI as like something that you kind of, um, you almost like you grow in intelligence, you know, in the same way that you like you raise a child, and like what do you teach the child? Digital superintelligence is grown. It, it's it matters what you encourage and discourage, what you teach it is, you know, good or bad or, you know, what it's kind of like you you build it with values, so. And, I, I, and I'm concerned about sort of the, the values that sort of a Microsoft OpenAI or, you know, Google uh, are programming. It's, and, and, and this is not, I mean, these examples I've mentioned are not imaginary. They're, they're actually what it did. As I don't want to frustrate uh, the audience, and uh, I promised that uh, we'll have an interactive session where people can ask directly questions to you, I will stop here on my own questions and I will eventually come back if they have no question to put to you. We will start with uh, group number one. Uh, I remind you that you have 15 seconds. And 15 seconds. 15 seconds. <laughs> and if you don't put your question in 15 seconds, you will be cut. So it is important that you put a short question. Go on. Hi, Elon. So I'm Olivia. I'm actually from VivaTech. Um, and we have an initiative called The Good Hack, where we're asking our attendees questions about how to develop AI responsibly. Um, so my question for you is, how can we ensure that AI development um, remains transparent and accountable across you know, all the different development, um, obviously like yours, X, uh, XAI, but other ones as well? Thank you. Well, I, I have said for a long time that I do that. I believe that there, that some regulatory oversight um, of the large models is warranted. Um, I've actually said that now for for a very long time. Um, the, the nature of that oversight is important. Um, I, I go back to what I was saying earlier, which is that I think it's very important that um, AIs be trained to be uh, truthful um, and and not trained to be politically correct. Um, if political correctness is is often simply not true, uh, and that means you're programming AS to lie, and I think that will backfire very badly. So, um, you know, it's, that's I, I keep harping on this point of, of but it, it really, as the saying goes, honesty is the best policy. It's incredibly important. Um, I, I, I do I do fear that regulators will 
not make the right decisions, um, that they'll worry too much about the sort of um, human follies. Um, and I would encourage regulators to say what, what matters most of all is your AI is accurate and truthful. That is by far, that's rule number one. Honesty is the best policy. You have uh, Thank you. exactly the same uh, opinion that uh, Joshua Banjo, but he has a different way to get there. M group number two. Hey, Elon, my name is Marina, and we all know just part of Elon Musk in public. Like, it's a character that we love in a good way character. So do okay. you, <laughs> and if you do, how do you check everything that you say that you do if it enters in this character or no? Thank you. Well, you know, I, I, I kind of stop. I, I don't have, like, uh, news alerts on, on me, and I, I rarely read news articles on me. In fact, even Walter Isaacson's book, um, I asked, asked Walter, should I read the book? And he said no. So then I didn't even read the book on myself. Um, <laughs> so I actually don't quite know what the, the public perception is, um, except that, you know, the, the, the nature of news is that it is going to be uh, salacious. Um, you know, it is going to be somewhat of a caricature um, because the, the more sort of crazy something sounds, the more clicks it will get. So, I like, it, like, when you think about, say, a news story about something that you know, you know well, um, and say, how accurate is that news story about something that you know well, then I think you'll find that, well, it's actually not very accurate. Well, that's true for everything. Um, but, you know, there's, there's sort of a, a desperate quest for clicks, and, and so that, and the more crazy the headline is, uh, the more clicks it will get. So, um, this is not to suggest that there aren't uh, true things said by the media. It's just that it, it, it is best thought of, the media is best thought of as a click maximizing machine, not a truth maximizing machine. So, so um, you know, I think it's best to look at the words that somebody that says them um, as opposed to what is written about. Them. Number three. On that note, time for me question. Elon Musk, it's Karen Cho from CNBC. I think it's fair to say there are lingering doubts about your commitment to bring a low-cost EV to market in a landscape where the likes of BYD can produce a car for about $10,000. Are 100% tariffs from the Biden administration the green light you need to push ahead with this low-cost EV? And if so, what is the timeline for deliveries? Well, I mean, I, I, obviously, it's difficult for me to answer questions about a publicly traded company uh, that are of such a significant nature. Um, ah, the line. Besides the, the tariff. We should be using Starlink. Sorry, that connection, that technique. So you see that um, it's easier to have a chip in the mind of the people, in the brain, rather to have a right connection with L.A or San Francisco. Elon, are you back? I wanted to do some tap dance, but I'm really bad at it, so I will not do it. And singing is not really a good thing for me, so you will have to wait in silence. Hello? Spencer, you are behind. Can you tell us if uh, the connection is... Uh, okay, he's reconnecting, but it seems to be slow to reconnect. So I'm asking for a little bit of patience. Merci. Karen, maybe it's because it was a journalist question that uh, Elon has decided to cut you off. <laughs> but it's a great question. I'm sorry. As we say uh, in, in France, uh, you see, this is uh, something which is interesting, but it's not fake. Uh, so it's not artificial intelligence which is uh, cheating. It is... Uh, Elon Musk who has to learn how to use a computer. He needs some training. Maybe he has not paid the bill. To, to... Ah, you are back. Oh! Okay, guys. Next time we will use uh, uh, Starlink. Yes. Uh, so, Karen. This, this, was, this was not Starlink. My apologies. Um, so, uh, I don't know why this is uh, this connection is bad. It's only crystal clear. Um, so uh, let's see. I think there's some a question about. Uh, you want how? Karen to put the question again, Karen? Uh, no, I, I, I heard the question. Okay. Um, 
You know, the, the, there's, I mean, I always want to ask questions that directly affect the stock price, which is, you know, not my favorite kind of question to answer. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and nor is it, I think, uh, of interest to the audience. Um, so, uh, the only point I want to make it really neither Tesla, um, uh, neither Tesla nor I asked for these tariffs. In fact, I was surprised when they were announced. Um, you know, Tesla competes uh, quite well in the market in China uh, with no tariffs um, and uh, no differential support. Um, so, uh, I, in general, I'm, I'm in favor of, of no tariffs. Um, I'm, I'm also actually in favor of no um, uh, tax incentives uh, for EVs, but, but provided that there are also the tax incentives for oil and gas must also be eliminated. So I'm in favor of, of no tariffs and no incentives for electric vehicles or for oil and gas. And if, if they're all taken away, I think that would be for, for the best. So it's back to what you were saying about truth. You want the truth uh, working, truth of yeah, the, I, of the yeah, price? I think, I think generally things that uh, inhibit um, freedom of exchange uh, or, or distort the market are um, not good. <laughs> Number four. So, hey, uh, hey, Lon, thanks for uh, being there. So I was wondering if you have the time travel machine and you were able to go back in time and speak to the younger Elon, to which age would you go and what would you tell him and also can I get a ride on the new Tesla roster when it comes out? <laughs> um, which age? Well, you know, you do have that, that classic time traveler problem of like if you go back and you tell yourself something, does that affect the outcome in a way that is half bad that you don't anticipate? So, um, you know, all things considered, I'd say I, overall, I'm kind of, it's hard, you know, I'd say I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how things turned out. So I'd probably go, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't do anything because you just don't know if, if like some well-meaning thing you said to a younger version of yourself actually ends up with a worse outcome. So probably I would, I would be curious to, to see uh, younger me, I suppose, but I'd probably would stay invisible and not say anything. Um, so, yeah, you never know how things will turn out. Um, then w with respect to the roadster, sure, I'll, I'll make sure you get it right. Um, uh, send me, if, if you send me an email, when it comes out, I'll make sure you get it right. <laughs> to the roadster, sure, I'll, I'll make sure you get it right. Um, uh, send me, if, if you send me an email, when it comes out, I'll make sure you get around. <laughs> if you were a Frenchman, I would say the best age is, tw is love, because when we love, we are always 20. Uh, number five. Uh, actually, you know, I am slightly French. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, when, I, when I did the 23 and me, I mean, I mean uh, to be you know, honest, uh, I, I am majority British. But the next highest thing it said in 23 and Me was French. Uh, so okay, I, great. We will uh, make sure that you can be a, a French citizen as soon as you want. Five. Hi, bonjour, Elon, in French. Uh, I'm Delphine Urba. I'm president and founder of Orbital Lux. We're bridging uh, aerospace and luxury. I wanted to know if you have any thoughts on the recent partnership between between Estee Lauder and NASA, or Coperni and NASA, and if you wanted to do any initiatives with SpaceX, and what you would do, what would you like to develop? Thank you. Okay, I, I, unfortunately, I'm not familiar with the um, what, what you mentioned there. Uh, SpaceX is um, well, very, well, very focused on the the Starlink, on the the Starlink constellation for internet connectivity, um, which I think is doing a lot of good in the world. It's bringing uh, internet, internet connectivity to places that don't have it or where it is uh, very expensive. Um, and I think it's a tremendous enabler uh, um, of education um, and uh, for um, enabling people to sell their goods and services uh, internationally. Um, so even if you're a remote village, you can still sell, sell your goods and services. Um, so 
uh, the Starlink is great. And then um, the long-term goal, of course, for SpaceX is to uh, to make life multiplanetary. You know, sort of life on Mars. This is my Mars shirt. <laughs> um, you know, so it's uh, you know the, the, the this is again somewhat of an es esoteric um, argument, perhaps, or it may seem so. Uh, but the, the goal of SpaceX is to pass the single planet Fermi grade filter. Um, so people often ask me, um, do, I, what, do I think there are aliens on Earth? I get this question a lot, actually. Um, and I've, I have not seen any evidence of aliens. Um, and I assure you, if I saw any evidence of aliens, I would immediately post it on the X platform. Uh, that, <laughs> that you can be sure of. Um, so, but it is concerning that there aren't aliens because it means maybe we're um, alone in this galaxy. Maybe we're the only, um, maybe, maybe it's just us. Maybe it's just that we're the only conscious beings, um, at least in this galaxy. Uh, in which case, uh, consciousness is extremely fragile. Um, and we should do everything we can to preserve and extend uh, the light of consciousness, um, preserve it on Earth and extend to other planets. Um, and so, um, you know, one of the one of, one of the reasons that people think, well, maybe the reason we haven't gotten into aliens is because no civilization has gotten beyond its home planet in our galaxy. So that's what you might call the um, the Fermi single planet great filter. Um, Enrico Fermi was a, a great Italian physicist who asked this profound question: Where are the aliens? Um, so we need to become a sustainably multi-planet civilization. Um, and this is the first time in the four and a half billion year history of Earth when it has been possible to do so. It has never been possible until now. So I think we want to become sustainably multi-planetary while it is possible to do so. Um, that window of capability may be open for a long time, but it may also be open for a short time. So that is the purpose of SpaceX. Some people believe that uh, you are an alien. I am an alien. Ah, uh, you are. Please, uh, yeah. na now you, you are uncovered. Yes. You tell <laughs> people I'm an alien, but nobody believes me. Number six. Sorry. Uh, you see, number six has disappeared. No, I'm here. I'm here. Now you are here. I'm here. No. Yeah, over here. Over here. Yeah, great. No, perfect. Okay. Hi, Elon. Um, Hi. Love my model. Love my model three. I'm Canadian. Ryan from Farpoint AI. Uh, my question is about XAI. So competition in open source AI helps all of those that don't have 100,000 H100s. Could XAI right. commit to always releasing a model that beats the current open source model, the best open source model, if they have one? Not necessarily your best model, but if you can beat the current open source top of the list, you can commit to releasing that for our benefit. Um, yes, I will make that commitment. Thank you. Okay. Number seven. That's good. Short answers. Hi. People will speak. <laughs> Hi, Elon. My name is Katya, and I'm founder of the startup Chat and Church. We're connecting people to people for EV because they still feel a lack of charging stations. Around Europe. 15 seconds you have. Yes, and my question, question is about the, what is your progro prognosis about the EV charging infrastructure for the next five years? Well, actually, I think that there's, that there's a lot of charging infrastructure. Um, you, know, you can travel certainly anywhere in greater Europe on a Tesla, using Tesla superchargers. Um, and Europe actually has a lot of uh, pretty good uh, third party superchargers. Um, and you can travel anywhere in North America, um, anywhere in, in China, Japan. Um, so I, I think actually the, the freedom to travel um, with uh, high-speed charging um, is solved in most parts of the world and will be solved everywhere. Number one. Uh oh. Number one. We are sleeping. Hi, Elon. My name is Shan. Eight. Sorry, sorry. Eight. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Uh, eight Hi. first. My fault. No worries. Go ahead. Hi, Elon. I'm Oliver Vroom. I'm running an AI safety group in Utrecht. I'm wondering how can I convince people about the danger of AI? And could I chat with the people at XAI Safety's team? Shout out to userexperience.org as well. Yeah. Um, uh, 
I, I mean, I, I do think there's, there's, there's some danger associated with digital superintelligence. Um, as I said earlier, the, I, th I think the biggest issue is that it has to be trained to be rigorously truthful, um, and it has to be trained with, to be curious. Um, and I've thought a lot about AI safety for a long time. Um, you know, one of the challenges you have with programming uh, explicit morality into AI is that if you, uh, sometimes people call this the Waluigi problem. If you program uh, Luigi, you can automatically invert that and create Waluigi, bad Luigi. Um, so what, what you cannot invert is the, the truth of, is, is physical reality. Um, so you, you can't invert the rules of physics. Um, uh, you can't invert logic. Um, and uh, so, so I think that, that, that is the, the better way to go. Um, so, so really, I think what regulators should be concerned about is, is the AI being rigorously truthful? Um, is it giving an answer that is um, most probably correct with acknowledged error? Um, I think that's the best move for, um, for AI, and that's, that's what we're trying to do at XAI. Um, now, we still, XAI is, is, is a new company, so there's not, uh, it, it still has a lot of catching up to do before it has um, an, uh, an AI that is uh, competitive with, um, with sort of Google DeepMind and um, Microsoft uh, OpenAI. Uh, so, no, I, I think maybe t towards the end of this year we will have that. Um, but it's, there's not much point in, um, you know, trying to make it to, 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 to it, we, just need, we, we just need to have an AI that is competitive, is the first order of business. If, if, if it is not competitive, um, which is, it is not yet, but I think it will be, uh, then, um, you know, things start to have a point at that, like we need, need we, we need to only start worrying about safety when it is uh, of comparable power to other AIs. So. Right. And, and I just keep harping on this, this point of the truth. Truth, 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 truth. This is very important. Um, and uh, sometimes people will say, like, well, is there an objective truth? And I say, well, in a lot of cases, there is. If you're talking about physics, there, there is an objective truth. Or you can say there's a truth with, with hi highest probability. So you can say, what is most probably true um, with um, an acknowledged error? So in physics, people will say, like, this hypo this hypothesis appears to be true to uh, a sort of five sigma um, error type of thing. So, so it's like, okay, well, if, if, if the experimental results are coming true to five sigma, then it's probably correct. Um, five, five sigma is a lot. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's it, it's, it's kind of like, I guess, a sort of a, a, a physical this approach to safety is, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself here, but I can't emphasize enough that honesty is the best policy. Um, but there are, there are strong forces to, to, um, for AI to not be honest. If something does not, uh, is, is not an unfashionable thing to say, then it will, it, you know, uh, it will be politically correct, and, and that's lying. Thank you. Number one, I'm sorry for... Hello, eight. Elon. Uh, my name is Shan. I'm a student of University of Belfast. Uh, we found that a lot of jobs uh, being replaced by AI. Uh, do you worry about your job re being replaced by AI? If not, why? <laughs> uh, if your job was uh, replacing, replaced by AI, what would you do? Well, I mean, we do get into some existential questions here. Um, in, in a benign scenario, um, in a benign scenario, uh, we probably, none of us will have a job. Um, there will be, but in that benign scenario, there will be universal high income, and not universal basic income, universal high income. There will no shortage of goods or services. And I, I think the ninth scenario is the most likely scenario, probably, I don't know, 80% likely, if you ask, in, in my opinion. Um, the, the question will not be um, on of uh, lacking goods or services. You'll have um, 
everyone will have, will have access to as much in the way of goods and services as they would like. Um, the, the, the question will really be one of meaning of how, if, if you, if the computer can do, and the robots can do everything better than you, uh, then uh, what, the, 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 does your life have meaning? That's, that's really the, what will be the question in the benign scenario. And in the negative scenario, we'll, we'll bet we're, we're in deep trouble. Um, so I, I do think there's, there's, there's perhaps still a role for humans in, this, in, in that we may give AI meaning. Um, so if you, if you think of the way that our brain works, we've got the limbic system, which is our instincts um, and our feelings, and then we've got the cortex, which is uh, thinking and planning. Um, but the cortex is constantly trying to make the limbic system happy. So maybe that's how it'll be with AI, which is the AI is trying to make our cortex happy, which is trying to make our limbic system happy. And maybe we are what give the AI meaning or purpose, you know, or some kind of, yeah. I, so, but, but I, I do think that long term, in a benign scenario, any job that somebody does will be optional. Like if you, if you, if you want to do a job as kind of like a hobby, you can do a job. But, but otherwise, the, the AI and the robots will provide any goods and services that you want. Okay. So, you see, there is a, a future <laughs> where no one will need to work. It would be just passion. So, uh, pro pro that is the most likely outcome. Um, if, if people are interested in reading some science fiction books, that the most accurate portrayal of a future uh, with um, super intelligence AI is um, was done by Ian Banks. Uh, the, the culture book of Ian Banks um, are um, the best. That, that, that's probably the best visioning of a future AI. Number two. Hello. Hello, Mr. Mersk. Uh, so, first of all, congratulations for your graduation of your kid. And my question is, do you think that IEA will impact the education of the future generation of kids? Uh, mostly about that, uh, the values and the morals. Well, I think the parents will still be responsible for values and morals. Um, I do think AI will dramatically affect education because the, the AI is an extremely knowledgeable teacher, um, very patient will be almost always correct um, and can tailor the lessons specifically to the child. So it would be like each child has, you know, Einstein for a teacher, so it would be something quite profound. Um, I do worry that <laughs> kids these days are being trained by social media um, and the social media AI algorithms are, are basically dopamine maximizers. So they're trying to maximize the you know, ma maximize the um, amount of dopamine that you get by watching the screen. Um, you know, so that, I would say, I would urge parents to limit the amount of social media that children are able to see, because they're, they're being programmed by a dopamine, dopamine maximizing AI. So you understand that um, Elon is ready to sacrifice uh, X to XAI. Number three. Hi, Elon, it's Priya Shravasta from Business Insider. Um, taking it to Tesla, Tesla has had a bumpy few months looking at flagging sales at home, um, stock market decline, layoffs. When you look back, are yeah, there I, anything? We, we can stop the question right now because I, 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 I don't think Business Insider is a real publication. Okay. So let's move on to the next question. All right, thank you. Ah, so next question, number four. <laughs> Hi, Elon. Uh, my name is Sharo, and I have a very specific question about Neuralink. Do you think in future, with the help of Neuralink, you will be able to uh, use the human brain scan's data to develop the most powerful and creative AI the world has ever seen? And if you like my question, will I ever get a visit to a SpaceX station in my life? SpaceX station in my life. <laughs> I see 42 in the background there. The answer to life, the universe, and everything. Uh, actually, which reminds me that another book worth reading is Douglas Adams' uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, I, that's a book of philosophy that is just sort of kind of disguised as a book on humor um, or coming through as, as humor. Um, 
So Hitchhiker, always worth reading Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, I find that to be quite an inspiration. Um, and uh, the name of the first starship to go to Mars will be Heart of Gold, after the ship in uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide. So um, the goal of SpaceX is to enable anyone who wants to go to Mars, or wants to go to the moon, to be able to go, so that it is affordable to um, a very large percentage of people on Earth. Um, that's our goal. Um, eventually, in order to build a self-sustaining civilization on Mars, uh, to make life multiplanetary, you obviously need to bring a lot of people to Mars. And um, like I said, that's I think that's a very important thing um, for the long-term survival of consciousness. Um, because eventually, eventually something will happen on Earth um, that will eliminate uh, life as we know it, as happened with the dinosaurs and happened many times in the fossil record. So, you know, hopefully it's not any time soon. You know, hopefully it's not any time soon. Uh, but it will eventually, there will be uh, some sort of natural cataclysm that uh, eliminates life as we know it on Earth even if we do not eliminate it ourselves. Um, so we really, I think it's very, very important to, to make life multiplanetary while we can. Um, and that means making it as affordable as possible to, um, to move to Mars, um, as well as the moon. So before going to Mars, we will uh, still take uh, a few questions because we are coming to the end. Number six. Hello. Uh, thank you. Five, sorry. Hi, so it's me again. I'm talking for Elodie. Uh, she is a coach and she would, wanted to know if she would be ready to use your own intelligence because she has created a technique for coaching between neuroscience and quantum physics and she uh, offers to do it uh, very fast and uh, in all confidentiality. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Um, okay, Elodie. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so we move to number six. Yeah, hi. So my name is Mara, CEO and founder of Unlock. Uh, my question will be on the African technological development. Last time I had a great conversation, conversation sorry, with someone you may know, Karim Begir, who had been nominated by Times Magazine as an AI word influencer. Talking about Africa and given the uh, increasing potential on this, uh, on this continent in technology, what initiatives, collaboration or uh, contribution do you foresee? Um, it's difficult to say. Um, I, I do think Africa has a lot of potential. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and I think one of the, the things holding Africa back has been lack of internet uh, connectivity, which is what Starlink is helping to solve. Um, you know, with that, people can learn anything and, um, uh, and, and be sort of part of the uh, global culture. Whereas if, you, if you're not connected, then you're, you know, I mean, all you can do is like write letters or something. So, um, so connectivity is essential for um, uh, Africa and, and, and other places to uh, be part of the global culture and participate in AI and other uh, activities. Um, Number seven. Hi, Ellen. Um, I'm Louis Nicola, and I'm building an AI that is super authentic and precise for uh, to help entrepreneurs uh, grow and manage their business, but. I'm super enthusiastic about um, travel <laughs> and adventure, uh, and I want to ask you, when do we go to Mars? On l'a vu le t-shirt, hein? We have seen it, and it's okay. <laughs> it's really going for the 42. But it's good, but it's okay, uh, 42. <laughs> L'école 42, um, très bien. Well, I, I, I think, I think we, we'll hopefully uh, land the first starship um, uncrewed on, on Mars within five years, and also on the moon, um, and I think I, I think we will have the first people on the moon, or uh, both the moon and uh, I think first people on the moon probably within five years, and uh, and then and then first people on Mars probably within ten years. Maybe I think less than ten years, maybe seven or eight years. You mean we'll be able to land on Mars in seven, seven eight years? Yes, with people. Yes. Wow. <laughs> that, that, that is what's going Wow. Is. Number eight. Um, hi, Elon. I have a quick question. I would like to know, in relation with electromobility, 
what innovative projects uh, do Elon Musk and Tesla have in mind for the coming years? Thank you. So do you want to disclose your secret mm -hmm. here? Well, we are I, all waiting I, 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 for I, 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 something, a breaking news. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think, we, we don't want to do sort of product announcements. Uh, <laughs> You know, um, yeah, simply as in, in, in Q and A, uh, that wouldn't that wouldn't make sense. We we know we we, we do our product events uh, as product events. Um, so, but obviously, some of the things people are aware of, um, you know, like robo taxis or cyber cabs, and um, the Optimus humanoid robot. Um, so, uh, th those are very big deals. Um, if if, even if that's the only thing you knew about Tesla, um, you know that that will be a, those two things will be extremely profound. Um, a, a large fleet of autonomous uh, vehicles that, you know, basically a generalized solution to uh, self-driving and a generalized solution to a humanoid robot. Um, those two things are in incredibly profound. Uh, Elon, uh, we promised that um we will be done at um, 6.30 time. It is 6.37, but we had the interruption because uh, yeah. of the connection. Uh, do you give us five more minutes? Um, let me just double check, and I think I would like to if I can. Uh, yeah, sure. Sure. On our cinq minutes, very short, very <laughs> short question, very short answers. Ah, very short question. Elon Musk, I'm Frederick. Uh, Years ago, you said that Ariane 5 rocket wouldn't have any chance to survive. Would you say the same about Ariane 6, which will be launched in July and which is much more cost efficient? Thank you. Short answer. Yes. Any rocket that is not at least mostly reusable has no competitive chance. Um, so with, with Falcon 9, the booster, the main stage is, is reused and the fairing on Ozcone is reused. So you have about 80% of the vehicle being reused and reflown. Um, it, it's simply not possible for an expandable vehicle to compete with uh, a reusable vehicle. Um, and, and I mean, one can think of this in any other arena, if it was um, cars or planes or boats. If one company was making a reusable plane or a, an 80% reusable plane and Another company was making a plane that was expendable, that you could use only for one flight. The company making the expendable planes uh, would have no business at all because you'd have to buy a new plane every time you take a flight somewhere. Um, so this is why I've said for many years that it is completely pointless to develop rockets that are not reusable. Number two. Thank you. Philip from Quick Chat. I wanted to ask following question. Uh, people love ChatGPT, but you literally hate most website chatbot experiences, the bottom right corner ones. What's needed to bridge that gap? I messaged you on X so we can continue this later. I'm not sure I fully understand the question there. Um, um, but this, uh, you know, I, I agree. You know, I, I agree ChatGPT is, is Data chatting. Um, but my concern is that it is not uh, rigorously in pursuit of the truth, and that's that's a, bit, a major concern. Um, so um, that, that that's it. So Grok will be pursuing Grok from XAI will uh, at least sort of try its best to be rigorously in pursuit of the truth, uh, and also we want to try to be the funniest AI. So I think you know if, if we are going to die, at least we should die laughing. So, um, we're trying hard to make Grok be the funniest AI. Done. You have been extremely generous with your time. It has been great. You have been truthful. You have given profound answers. I would like that we make a lot of noise to thank you. <laughs> you are hearing the noise. This means that next year you have to be in person. We okay, will give you good. the date long time in advance and before you leave, I will ask you for one word, your biggest hope, one word, your biggest fear. Well, I don't know about one word. Um, I guess my biggest hope, well, I guess I could give you my biggest hope in one word, which would be Mars. That's going to be obvious. 
Um, so, yeah, um, Mars, Mars, Mars would ensure that uh, we, that consciousness uh, survives for a long time. Uh, my biggest fear, in one word, AI. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, Peter Guess, both of them, I think. Okay. So, thank you very much. Elon, you have been great, as always. One question. Only one question. One question. No. Only one question. No, no. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you. And uh, next year in Paris. Before you leave, before you leave, I would like uh, to thank you all, to tell you that uh, tomorrow will be a bigger day and uh, there is more things to see, to, to look, to watch, to discuss. And for the people who are interested in the funding, you should know that BPI is having now a special event at stage one. So Banque Populaire d'Investissement, BPI France, is having an event which is very specific, Stage one, you can still join. Merci, good evening.